Shroom it is slow, Shroom it has an old design, Shroom it is limited. Hello data fans, those are all concerns I heard in my three years of using Shroom it on almost any ID that pops up in my head. Dear chatbot. Yes, I am a diehard Shroom it fan, I even have a whole YouTube channel about Streamlit, so I can't rant about Streamlit, okay? The run from top to bottom at every user interaction philosophy makes some use cases painful to implement, and there are definitely use cases cases where I replace Streamlit for something else because I know how hard it can be to build and maintain such applications. For example, on a Thursday night I was randomly browsing the Streamlit forum for questions to answer with a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> when I found this befuddling topic, somebody was trying to plot a 100Hz image display produced by an external sensor. Now when you consider the rerun the streamage script from top to bottom whenever you get a new image, can you imagine a 100 full experimental rerun per second? By the way, it works by itself, but try adding some other code around, like just a timer and an image counter in session state and suddenly streamage goes off the rail. And this is not something that caching no your session state will easily mitigate. Producing an image or downloading an image from a RabbitMQ where the sensor would store the image in real time is something I will do on a separate thread, so the streamit thread can focus on reacting to slider changes. So you put the image download, the ST image display and the session state counter increment in a dedicated thread and then everything goes wrong again. That's where you get a missing script run context, what is that? Where can I find this script run context thing? And listen, there are ways to go around this issue, but, but to do that, we need to open the door to, to stream it into Nozzle. You start a streamit server with the streamit run app.py command. It starts the main thread, which runs the tornado web server. And then when you connect to this tornado web server with your browser, it creates an app session object on the main thread with your session data information. And it's linked through WebSocket to your connected tab. Now, every time you need a rerun of the streamit app because you touch the slider in your browser, the app session creates a script runner object on a separate thread and passes it a script run context. Hmm. This script runner is responsible for running the entire Python script and then send back change frontend data to the main thread, which then report it back to your connected tab through WebSocket. The lesson is every user session is managed on the main thread and every rerun is spawned in a separate thread. The script runner thread has a specific object context that contains all the data necessary for doing streamit calls in a script run. And if your thread doesn't have it, it's game over for calling streamlets. How do I add that script run context to my own thread? By using an undocumented method that may disappear without notice. This method has been here for a while. I mean, there are traces of it from posts back three years ago. Yes, I'm doing streamlet archaeology. So let's assume it doesn't disappear yet. That undocumented method is in the script runner package. It is the add script run context. Run it on your custom thread and ta-da, it works, it, it works so smoothly. The Streamit main thread now only manages slider changes and your custom thread downloads the image at a certain rate and then displays it in Streamlit, which is great. But now you have to manage your own threads. Are you sure that when you move the slider and the main thread reruns that your previous custom thread is closed properly by Streamlit? Or, or when you kill the Streamlit server, are you sure that all of your custom threads are being exited properly? And suddenly you have to link all of your thread lifecycle to Streamlit even. Like there's a rerun, kill the threads. Otherwise that very quickly becomes a bunch of old threads hanging around and hogging your computer with your hundred open browser tabs already do for you. But threads are not the only way to run some code in parallel. Async you. That, that could be a, like a magic, you know. Async you. The solution I wrote on the forum for this specific problem was an async you solution. In, instead of spawning and managing your own threads, you write the download and display of the image in an async you coroutine that you integrate into the currently running async you loop. You do get 
get some subtle issues sometimes with coroutines not properly exited or race conditions from multiple asynchronous session state mutations, but those are very extreme cases. Ultimately, you cannot react to streamlit events like rerun or app exited to manage your own parallel code system. Or maybe you could by digging into the streamlit internals, but if you're at a point where you're matching your thread, I think your management with streamlit internals, you don't really need me to tell you how cumbersome this is. You know what you're doing, you're signed for it. And I know, I know, some of you have already prepared the YouTube comments for this to tell me, can't Streamlit have a true callback system where it reruns only a single Streamlit call depending on another change? Mmm, personal opinion? I don't think Streamlit was designed to be a reactive framework. And if you really wanted a reactive framework with callback spaghetti, then I would consider a Python alternative. Okay. Reactive applications with fine-grained control in Streamlit? That's daemon level mode. What else is hard in Streamlit? Here's an unpopular opinion of mine. Don't expect it to be easy to build BI dashboards with 20 different plots and cross-filtering in Streamlit. Now, I understand you don't want to use traditional BI tools. They are not very easy to version. They're not that flexible or customizable. They can become expensive because licensing and yada yada and you're a python programmer so surely it's possible to replace that with python and streamlit and i've seen multiple people build bi dashboards in streamlit i've done it i even made a quick video about it now would i recommend it just like threading in streamlit i would call that hardcore streamlit territory first you can't easily react to clicking on a plot plotly has a specific plotly events component to react to to most mouse events but it doesn't work on all of charts. The streamlit bulky events is unmaintained and the streamlit e-charts which is maintained by myself, well, it's been a long time since I did update it. Then you enable plot interaction so your app reruns from top to bottom at every user interaction. And, and this means rebuilding and redisplaying each plot every rerun. That looks time consuming, yeah? What advanced streamlit technique do you need to know? Caching. Caching is your best and only friend in this use case. Every plot you make, write it down in its own method and decorate it with cache data. That way the source code doesn't change and the import argument of the method didn't change, so the script rerun does not recompute the plot every time. Editor fan here, I just realized that streamit plot events and streamit e charts are streamit components so they cannot work with caching plots in Streamlit, rendering this entire point of caching plots with interactions in Streamlit No, it's useless. I don't know how you say this. So yeah, don't plot big e-charts charts, I guess. And happy Streamlitting. And if you feel courageous, and if any Streamlit widget controls a unique plot, then you can put that widget in the decorated method for the plot and add the experimental allow widgets parameters. So the widget control and the plot display are encapsulated in a single cache method. Then you need to order your functions so that the plots appear in proper order, or, or you build the layout with all the placeholders first, and pass placeholders as method arguments to your plot methods. And then spice them out with use container drift and key parameters so they fit nicely in columns and are not redisplayed on each rerun. Big multi-page BI solutions are possible when you are streamit intermediates. I personally run a dual Power BI plus Python setup. I use Power BI for quick cross-filtering between plots and for the more complex plots with like manual window processing, I use a dedicated streamit app with Plotly Express. I like like the unique style build one complex plot and maximum three to seven input sliders approach. Keep your apps minimal. Don't stuff too much functionality in a Streamlit app. Now Streamlit 
imposes a structure and design that makes it easy to build great looking demos. And then if you want to customize your app, put new colors to your buttons, add background images, a header, a footer, a logo, just change the look and feel. First, you'll notice you'll need to learn CSS and JavaScript to do that, which is honestly not the easiest way to start training your front-end skills. First solution, CSS hack. Write down CSS in a file, read that file in Python, and put it in a Schmidt Markdown code with unsafe allow with HTML enable. Learn to use the web inspector to find the CSS classes to select and the attributes to override and you're good. But, but this method makes it hard to select a specific button to edit. Like I want the fourth button in my second column to be blue and all of the other one to be red. If you need some very specific customization, you'll need the second method, iframe breaking. And at this point of the video, if you did not realize yet, it's all about hacking and breaking streamlets. You put an iframe at the end of the app, you use JavaScript to break out of the iframe into the streamlet main page, and then you inject CSS code on specific elements using JavaScript. I've done two videos on that, again, somewhere here, you, you, you can go watch them later. I'd love to inject at least CSS classes to make it much easier to select specific elements. This is something Gradio does already. You can put CSS code or classes on a specific element to customize it. I know the streamit team is thinking about it, Wait and see. It's possible to customize streamlets. It's a pain as you're going against streamlet design, but definitely doable. Now, with all those concerns, you may be asking yourself, why actually use streamlets? Well, you know, after three years, I'm still a huge streamlet fan. I use it in every occasion. Just yesterday, I downloaded four PDFs of 100 pages. I needed a summary of how data governance was managed in each of those PDFs. I built a streamlet app over Langchain. It took me five minutes. I have a demo I can show to marketing, business, and top management at the same time. I even treated the app and I got 200 likes. Yeah, when I use streamlet, I feel like a data influencer. And I always hear your stories during coffee chat with you of how you're a marketer who does invoicing in Streamlit or you're building GPT systems in Streamlit even with only six months of Python experience. I, I see you. I love the simplicity of the rerun everything from top to bottom at every user interaction and how it makes every marketer, manager, business developer, software engineer able to demo their idea. I don't feel the need to have too many features in my Streamlit app. And that's a question for you too. Do you need as many features bloated in a single application or can you split it into multiple smaller ones? If you're looking to building a big data BI product with Streamlit, then fine. You need to carefully prepare all of the features in advance to implement because the more you add features later on, the harder it is to move caching and widgets around so that nothing gets broken. And actually I feel most of the time when, when someone comes to me and says, I have a experience with it's one of those projects when that person started with a small app and slowly started stuffing the app with loads of features for me the power is in having an ecosystem of quick and advanced streamit apps with one good machine learning or stats features that you can run over your own data you just have to look at the extraordinary work that hugging face is doing on spaces most of the apps they are hosting there are small replicable radio apps that you can duplicate and run on your own data for that advanced machine learning feature. It's okay to use Streamlit to build big web apps BI dashboards, by the way, with Streamlit. I talked to some of you from the comment section and I saw mind blowing big applications. But if you are a beginner planning to use Streamlit for a big customized near real time applications, good luck, have fun, time to hack Streamlit CSS in this next video.